First of all, um, to say thank you for joining us. Um, I'm Clellan Snedden, I'm the returning officer for this um, elect by election, should I say, for Ward 9 East Cobride West. Um, so I'd like to welcome you to uh, today's session and uh, hope, hopefully you'll find this uh, session useful. Um, but uh, before we commence with the, the detail, I'll just introduce a couple of my colleagues. So on our call is Gordon Stewart, who is the Deputy Returning Officer for uh, this by-election, and also Tracy O'Hara, one of our colleagues from the Election Office. Um, so again, they'll be here today to hopefully help with any questions, uh, really difficult ones that uh, perhaps I might need some help with. So the aims of the briefing tonight, the um, purpose uh, is to discuss with you the contents of the post-nomination pack following the close of nominations on Monday of this week, yesterday, Monday the 5th of June 2023. We'll also provide a little bit more detailed information on the poll, uh, the postal vote arrangements and on the count. And uh, as I mentioned, we'll provide you an opportunity to ask questions, um, but just Put your hand up if there's anything as we go through rather than wait to the end. We'll try and pick up those queries. Um, a note of tonight's session has also been prepared and that will be provided to you after uh, the meeting. So if everyone's OK, I'll, I'll run through um, the formal information that we would want to share with you tonight. So firstly, in relation to the post nomination pack, um, that contains a number of documents. Um, some of those documents are statutory in nature. Um, others have been produced by uh, the eCount project team. So that's the Scottish Government, the Electoral Management Board for Scotland and the contractor Fujitsu and their subcontractor IDOX. And uh, yet other documents have been provided uh, that provides local specific information relating to Ward 9 in the South Lancashire Council area. So these documents have been included in the pack to inform you of the next steps in the by-election process following the close of nominations at 4pm on Monday the 5th of June. The first three documents in the post nomination pack are the statutory notices which must be published and this has been done in public facing council offices and libraries in the South Lanarkshire area but also on the council's website at www.southlanarkshire.gov.uk. So the notices, and I'll just run through these, um, the notice of poll and statement of persons nominated you'll find at appendix one. So following the close of nominations, there are a total of seven candidates standing in Ward 9, East Cobride West, um, and the order of the candidates in this notice is the same as they will appear on the ballot paper. That is in alphabetical order by surname. The ballot paper advises of a number of candidates listed on the ballot paper to be elected. In this case, it will be one candidate and then instructs that voters can make as many or as few choices as they wish. And just for form, just to, to go through that, um, the voter would put the number one in the voting box next to their first choice, two in the voting box next to their second choice, three in the voting box next to their third choice, and so on. The second document uh, notice I would point to is the notice of candidates and election agents. You'll find that at Appendix 2 in your pack. This document is fairly self-explanatory, but it includes the details relating to each of the election agents for the candidates that are standing. The third notice uh, is the notice of situation of polling places, and you'll find that in your pack at Appendix 3. This document was provided as part of your nomination pack, but it's now been updated with electorate information as at Friday the 26th of May 2023, which is the relevant date for your election expenses um, for each polling place. These notices are displayed on various public facing council offices and again on the council's website at www.southlanarkshire.gov.uk. Notification of appointment of counting and polling agents and appointment of postal voting agents uh, you'll find in your pack at Appendix 4A and 4B. This form allows candidates to appoint as many polling agents as considered necessary to attend the polling places. However, the number of counting agents is based on the maximum attendees to ensure the safe conduct of the count at each of the venues. This is dictated by the capacity of the venue and I have allowed four counting agents per candidate in addition to the candidate, a guest and the election agent. So in total, um, there would be seven persons per candidate to attend the count. Those of you who um, were part of the local government elections that took place last year will be aware of these arrangements just to ensure that we 
are able to accommodate the maximum numbers we can, but to do so safely and the safety of the count is paramount. The statutory deadline for returning the form is Thursday the 29th of June 2023, but obviously it is helpful if you can return the document much earlier as it allows passes to be put into production at the close of that date. On receipt of your completed document, you will be advised of the arrangements for picking up your passes in advance of attending the count. In relation to postal voting agents, that's uh, at Appendix 4B, if you're appointing postal voting agents to attend the postal vote opening sessions, the deadline for this form is different. You must return the postal voting agents form in advance of the relevant session you or your agent wishes to attend. The opening sessions are detailed in Appendix 5 and I will talk through those sessions later on. In relation to car parking uh, passes, because we're doing the count at the council headquarters, there's no reserve parking for this event and parking is available in Beckford Street and outside Montrose House, as well as the large car park to the rear of uh, the council offices in Almada Street. There is disabled parking in Beckford Street. Uh, however, if there are any concerns regarding accessibility, please let the election team know and we'll try to assist. The remaining items in your post nomination pack will be referred to as we proceed through the rest of the agenda. OK, I'm not seeing any hands, so I'll just continue on. So postal and proxy vote arrangements, uh, the issue of postal votes, as I mentioned, for the issue of the postal votes, and as that draws close, closer, I would um, mention that the, uh, as I mentioned at the pre-nomination session, remind you of two key principles when we're dealing with postal votes. And to be honest, uh, in relation to all election arrangements. So in the Electoral Commission's Code of Conduct for candidates and agents, we stress candidates and agents should uphold the secrecy of the ballot. And then secondly, candidates and agents should not place themselves in a situation where their honesty or integrity can be questioned. The deadline for postal vote applications or changes to existing arrangements is 5 p.m. on Wednesday, the 21st of June 2023. And you can download application forms from the Electoral Registration Office website or from www.gov.uk forward slash register dash two dash vote. There is only one run of postal votes which will be dispatched. And just to, to note, the application deadline for registration and postal votes is Wednesday the 21st of June 2023 and the dispatch date you uh, for postal votes will go out first class on Monday the 26th of June 2023. Postal votes will be delivered first class as we mentioned, so the postal vote should reach the voter the next day. Postal voting packs include a ballot paper and a postal voting statement. Voters must provide their date of birth and their signature unless there's a waiver in place on the postal voting statement for their vote to be counted. If someone's unable to sign, they should apply for a waiver prior to the deadline of 5 p.m. on Wednesday, the 21st of June 2023. If a postal voter loses or spoils their postal voting pack, a replacement can be issued by contacting the election office up until 10 p.m. on polling day. So turning to proxy votes, if someone is too late to apply for a postal vote or they might be away when the postal vote is due to be delivered, they may wish to consider appointing a proxy to vote on their behalf. The deadline for applying to appoint a proxy is 5 p.m. on Wednesday the 28th of June 2023. The notice of opening of postal votes you'll find in your packet Appendix 5A. The statutory notice of opening of postal votes is enclosed in the pack and this notice advises on the venue and dates for the opening of postal votes sessions. As I mentioned earlier, candidates must ensure they have completed and returned their appointment of postal voting agents forum prior to the opening session that your agent wishes to attend. Entry will be by appointment and a member of staff will be on duty to meet your postal voting agent at the agreed time at the main reception in the council offices on Madda Street in Hamilton and they'll escort them to and from the postal vote opening session venues in sorry, the postal vote opening session venues in the election office and committee room one to observe the postal vote opening of envelopes and scanning and adjudication processes. 
In an effort to raise awareness of what actually happens at the opening of postal votes, I've prepared an outline procedure also detailed in Appendix 5. It's worth taking a moment to go through that procedure. So the opening procedure, the first stage is 1A, and that takes place on Thursday the 29th of June 2023, and that runs through to Wednesday the 5th of July 2023. The procedure until Wednesday the 5th of July is simply to prepare the envelopes that we've received for the full opening sessions, which will commence at 2 p.m. on Wednesday the 5th of July. Stage 1A means that staff open the outer envelopes, they remove the postal vote statement ready for verification and batch envelope A, and that's the envelope that contains the ballot paper. Please note envelope A will not be opened until the full opening session commences. The next stage, the opening procedures for full opening sessions, which takes place from 2 p.m. on Wednesday, the 5th of July 2023, running through till Thursday, the 6th of July 2023. The full opening process will be carried out as follows. So stage 1A, postal vote assistance will continue to work on stage 1A. Stage 1B, postal vote team leaders and scanner operators will scan the postal voting statements. Uh, they will adjudicate on the postal voting statements and instruct the, instruct the opening of envelope A. The next stage, 2A, on the instruction of the postal vote team leader, the postal vote assistants will commence stage 2A. That includes opening envelope A, removing the ballot papers and keeping all ballot papers face down so that they cannot be seen. Stage 2B, the postal vote team leaders will then scan the back of the ballot papers and reconcile the paperwork processed for the day, and that includes any returning officer adjudication. Stage 2C, postal vote team leaders' final task is to place accepted ballot papers in the allocated wallets and ballot boxes and then seal the ballot boxes. Whilst it is possible to observe this process, you will not be able to see the ballot papers, neither when the ballot paper envelope is opened, nor when the ballot papers are scanned. I would remind you that ballot paper sampling is not permitted during the opening sessions, and also a reminder that advanced notification must be given on the forms provided if you intend appointing a postal voting agent to observe this process. So I'll move on to poll cards. As I mentioned in your pre-nomination pack, the first run of poll cards will be posted tomorrow and those registering later, uh, but before the registration deadline, Tuesday the 20th of June 2023, they'll be posted out on Monday the 26th of June 2023. Now, arrangements that are in force at the poll, um, you'll find some further detail in your packet Appendix 6. This document has been prepared to outline some of the local arrangements at polling places, but I'd like to highlight a couple of points from the document. First of all, in relation to display of advertisements or publicity materials. Again, as mentioned in the pre-nomination session, guidelines were issued as part of the nomination pack, and these two documents advise that the council does not permit fly posting on street furniture or the display of A-frames outside polling places. If any of your supporters disregard this, you'll be contacted to immediately arrange for removal, failing which they will be removed by council staff. In relation to campaigning and leafleting, that's not permitted within the cartilage of the polling place. For most, there is a perimeter fence in place around the, the polling places where the entrance and exit to the building is straight onto the pavement. This means the building is the cartilage. The presiding officer at station number one has a layout plan of the cartilage of the building and has been asked to ensure that candidates and agents are clear on this. Candidates and agents can, where reasonable, be located at the entrance to polling places or even in inclement weather um, inside, but care must be taken to ensure that voters do not feel intimidated, that the area does not become congested and that there is strictly no leafleting taking place in this area. Presiding officers have been asked to ensure that this remains the case throughout the day and will liaise with the election office should any issues arise. But as returning officer, I will have final discretion on any issues which would arise. But I would ask you to engage with your supporters and any agents just to ensure that the guidance that we've issued out in the, in the pack is adhered to. 
In relation to rosettes um, with candidate or party details, those are permitted to be worn. If someone is in the polling station for a prolonged period of time for, for example, the purposes of detecting personation, they should, however, remove the rosette. And as with all elections, in relation to photography, there should be no photographs taken inside the polling station. So what do you expect on the polling day? So in relation to the election office, the election office will be open from 6 a.m. in the morning. Any issues that arise should be directed to the election office and the staff within the office can be contacted on 01698 455 745. In relation to polling staff, um, these the arrangements are as follows. Polling staff will arrive at their polling place um, around 6.30 to set up in good time for the opening of poll at 7 a.m. There will be one presiding officer and one polling clerk on duty at each polling station. A polling station inspector will visit the polling places at the start of the poll to support the poll staff and the election office team uh, will also assist throughout the day with arrangements. Standby polling staff have also been recruited to work at short notice if required, if there's any issues in relation to the staffing on the day. Voter turnout notices to assist candidates and agents. The presiding officer at station number one will display a notice detailing voter turnout and they'll try to update that approximately every couple of hours, every two hours. The notice will be displayed near the entrance um, to the polling place, but uh, clearly uh, agents can ask for turnout information at any time. However, our priority is always to ensure that the voters get to vote. And if the presiding officer is busy with voters, um, the voters will obviously take priority. However, as we stated, we'll try to make sure the notice is updated every two hours. In relation to polling places, there are no changes to the polling places and I would encourage feedback on the polling places we use uh, in this election um, after the event to allow us to continue to improve the voting experience and uh, the polling arrangements at future elections. And a full list of polling places are provided in your post nomination pack. Moving on to the count arrangements, um, attendance at the count will be by pass only. The count starts at 10 p.m. following the close of poll. If a pass hasn't been supplied, anyone just turning up on the day will not be admitted. So please, if you can share that information. There will be some hospitality available for those attending the count. So tea, coffee, biscuits will be provided. However, please try to refrain from taking drinks into the count area because of the electronic equipment we have in that place. The following documents are included within your post nomination pack to provide you with uh, information on the count arrangements. So firstly, the notice of counting of votes, that's in Appendix 7A. This statutory notice details the timing of events at the count venue. The draft count layout plan at 7B, the count pack will uh, be issued to you with your passes, will contain the finalised version of the layout plan. And the count information pack, which will be issued with the candidates and agents passes, will contain um, a, a, a hard copy of that plan. The allocation of passes, as I mentioned earlier, um, will be one for the candidate, one for the candidate's guest, one for the election agent and four counting agents. So a to total of seven for each, uh, each a a candidate. Therefore, um, we have asked a, a notice in writing of the agent's appointment stating the names and addresses of the persons must be lodged with me not later than Thursday the 29th of June 2023. And I've provided forms for this purpose as part of the post nomination pack. But please note uh, you're required to sign these prior to their submission. For the eCount project team, um, for your information, I've included in your pack some documents that were produced by the eCount project team. As I mentioned earlier, it's the Scottish Government Electoral Management Board for Scotland, the contractor Fujitsu that we're using, and their subcontractor iDocs um, for distribution to, to candidates. Whilst the documents were for uh, last year's election, the local government elections, uh, they're also relevant to this by-election. So you'll find in the pack a fact sheet number one, which is the uh, an outline of the local government elections e-counting overview, and you'll find that at Appendix 8. And that fact sheet explains how votes cast in the Scottish government elections will be counted. There's a second fact sheet in the pack as well, 
which gives you an outline of the single transferable vote STV system, and you'll find that at Appendix 9 in your pack. That fact sheet explains how the STV system works, and it's important to ensure that you're aware of how single transferable vote um, operates and understand the arrangements that will be in place for the electronic count. Really importantly, um, I want to cover recounts. If you feel that there is anything wrong or anything you're unhappy with or have seen throughout the process, then please don't wait to the end of the process or the end of the night when I've discussed the result with you before raising these issues or asking for a recount. Raise any concerns you have immediately with us. There would need to be appropriate grounds for requesting a recount, and I want to really emphasise this point, not just a close result. A close result is not grounds for a recount in itself. So please speak to an information officer who will be at the count um, who will advise me of any issues that you raise with them. In relation to note from a electoral registration officer, that's in it, a Appendix 10. The, this document should assist with the information relating to the electoral registration office. If candidates or agents require further information, please contact the electoral registration office direct. In terms of conducting your campaign and some security advice, you'll find that in your pack at Appendix 11. In terms of conducting your campaign, we cannot give legal or other advice about how you or your team conduct your election, um, or even how you behave within that campaign. Um, it's our job to run the election, but we don't police the election, nor do we regulate it. And you need to have regard to your own legal liabilities and your own personal conduct. If you have any personal uh, specific concerns, so to say, about the behaviour of any of the candidates or how they're campaigning, then you should contact either Police Scotland or the Electoral Commission as appropriate. Post-election information, um, I'll discuss uh, the following items uh, in more detail with you at the poll and count session that we intend running on Thursday the 29th of June. 2023. So we'll go into a little bit more detail around marked registers, um, about the limit on election expenses. Um, that will be Appendix 12 in your post nomination pack. Um, and you'll find there um, some updated uh, electorate, electorate information relating to the expenses limit and a link to the Electoral Commission website and their documentation and forums in relation to election expenses. And then finally, we will cover Electoral Commission return of election expenses documents, and you'll find that at Appendix 13. A couple of uh, additional areas I just want to cover. Um, public awareness campaigns. So local public awareness campaigns are ongoing, including press releases, the use of South Lancashire Council's website and their social media channels, statutory notices, as we mentioned earlier, uh, being published wherever possible, election and electoral registration office helpline numbers, and we've also got articles on South Lanarkshire Review. For this type of election, part of my remit is to promote um, a participation in the electoral process, and we'll continue to encourage people to use their vote um, in this election. So what happens next? Um, as I mentioned earlier, a polling day and count awareness session will be held on Thursday the 29th of June at 5.30, and the purpose of that session will be to run through an update on postal vote arrangements, to discuss polling day arrangements, uh, discuss count arrangements in a bit more detail, provide information in relation to post-election arrangements, and then finally, to provide an opportunity as ever to ask questions in advance of the poll and the count. We're also arranging for an e-count demonstration for candidates and agents, and Fujitsu, our contractor, are providing an opportunity for candidates and agents to see a demonstration of the e-count system on the afternoon of Wednesday, the 5th of July, 2023. The demo will be a walkthrough of, you know, of a ballot tray from start to finish in the process, and it's expected it would take approximately one hour. But the demonstration will include an explanation of the master clear down um, a, and system readiness report so that we know that the system's clear before we commence the count. A demonstration of the registration stages, the scanning, the verification, adjudication, and the uh, returning officer adjudication functions. Um, we'll also cover in that walkthrough the, the, a review of the declaration reports that I'll use 
during the results declaration and uh, as I said, as ever, an opportunity to ask questions. And I'll find, uh, I'll, I'll provide further details as to the timing of the demonstration at the polling count session. So that's our run through of the information um, we were hoping to share with you today. Um, but I'll maybe just check in with colleagues who have joined the call if there's any questions I can ask, uh, answer, sorry, on the information we've shared today or what's in your post nomination pack. So I'm just checking in if there's any hands, anybody wants to pop up. OK, it all seems, seems fairly straightforward, folks, yeah. OK, I'm not seeing any hands. So if on review or if anybody is viewing the recording of the, the session, if there's any clarification or reflection that you would want, please don't hesitate to contact the election team at any time and they'll be happy to help in the lead up to the, the election. My final ask is that you ensure your supporters and agents are aware of the information we've shared and the expectations I have as returning officer because we want to ensure that the process for the um, polling day, for the um, the count processes, etc., are all run through without any issues if possible. So that concludes the information I was going to share with you tonight. Um, so just to thank you for taking the time to, to join us and a uh, subject to no questions arising right at the end. I'll look forward to seeing you at the next awareness session. Thank you.